good morning, good morning. Ah, yeah. Good morning, good morning. All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Hallelujah. Good morning. Hey, can you guys? Hallelujah. Can you do me a favor for my Facebook users, for my Facebook users who are on with me live? Um, throw me some some likes or shares or comment whether you can hear me or not. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a new instrument this morning. I want to make sure that you can hear me properly on Facebook Live, okay? So my Facebook Live folks, please comment and let me know if you can hear me properly, okay? Amen. Can you guys hear me okay? Make sure of that before we get started this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Can you guys hear me? Okay, all right, good. You can hear me well, Adrian. All right, Amen. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm on a new instrument this morning, so I'm trying to uh, make sure that everything is set in order. So please uh, give me just a few moments um, as I matriculate through this experience. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. All right, all right. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So we bless God for you being here. All right, great. Thank you all so much to my Facebook users. Uh, thank God for our Impact Family, our Kingdom Agenda Fellowship friends. Uh, we bless God for you, man. And we're super excited about being with you this morning. Um, um, so uh, please, if you have any difficulties with, with hearing me or seeing me, please hit the comments as quickly as possible. We're on a new instrument this morning. Um, I've, I've, I've tested and tested and tested. And uh, you know me, I, I, if, if, if I'm in the word, I can see things a lot clearer than I can this technical stuff. Um, but we thank God for this vehicle of social media and, uh, and, and just working through, working through some things here working through some things here um, to make sure I got everything the way we need to have it. Okay, so um, um, again, welcome to our Impact Family, our Kingdom Agenda Fellowship friends. We bless God for you being with us. Now listen, I'm super excited about being with you this morning. Uh, we, are, we are more than blessed and we thank God for you allowing us to share in this time with you. Um, so, this morning I wake up, it's, it, the, the rain is flowing outside. Um, we've got fresh rainfall here in Montgomery, which is refreshing to us. Um, and I wake up this morning and I kind of had this question in my spirit, where do we go from here? Where, where do we go from here? Where do we go? What do we do with the knowledge that we gain? And, and as, I, as I often say to you from a teacher's perspective, a prophetic teacher's perspective, um, Having a lot of knowledge does us no good if we can't apply it, okay? Because knowledge without application is really a waste of time. It's a waste of time. So we have to, have to understand that once we learn a thing, once we, we, do, we, we, we get a thing, we've got to incorporate it into our lives. And so it's important to me that we understand that and that we understand that we've got to incorporate those things into our lives, okay? And so it's important, it's very important that we um that we we fully understand that 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 learning is not just good as learning it, we must incorporate it into our lives um and if we don't incorporate it into our lives then then it's again it's really just wasted time it's wasted time and so this morning as we come together this morning as we come together as we come together i want to i want to take time and take a moment for us to um, start to talk about how we apply some of these things. When we left off, when we left off, we talked about um, 
speaking the truth in love. That's what we left off about birthing kingdom. And I've been teaching you that through much tribulation, through, through much distress, do we birth kingdom. And so for the kingdom to come forth, we got to be prepared to go, go through some things ourselves. And so um, one of the things that we talked about yesterday, if you were with us for our impact worship experience, um, man, what a day. Um, I, I understand we had some audio problems and we did, we're, we're trying to work through that. We got to really, really rewire some things, but um, I pray you were able to hear the word of God. Um, I pray you were able to hear uh, what God was saying to us. Um, and, the, and the truth of the matter is each of us as individuals become individually, individually responsible for the word. And then as groups and subgroups and communities in the, in the kingdom, we become um, responsible for the word received. But here's the bottom line. We must remain kingdom in all things, in all things, in all things, we must remain kingdom. And so as we, as we work through this, and again, I'm working with a new instrument. So I need for, for my Facebook users. Um, uh, let me, let me designate a person right now that I know is online with me. Adrian, Adrian, I know you're on the video side with me. Um, if you have any difficulties with my picture or seeing me, I need you to, um, I need you to, um, to just text me on my phone. Okay. But I need to switch over to the computer side just for a second. So if you have any problems, just hit me on my phone, Adrian, and let me know that you lost video with me. Okay. All right. So, so as we looked at this on yesterday when we were, when we were, when we were in our, our impact experience, and I pray you will go back and listen to that message. We began to deal with healing our land. Because one of the things about healing our land that is required, and Minister Martha, if you will, if you'll put up for me um, um, Luke, um, Luke, the fourth chapter, Luke 4, and I want to put up the context of Luke 4, verses 14, 14 through 30. Luke 4, verses 14 through 30. I want to put that up as context in our, for our discussion. Luke 4, verses 14 through 30. So if we could insert those comments, Luke 4, verses 14 through 30. 30. Now watch this. Thank you, Lagora. I see you over there. Good. Thank you. All right. Luke 4, 14 through 30. We could put that up in our comments. So watch this. Watch this. When we when we talk about healing, and as, as I was teaching and instructing on yesterday, and I can slow down just a little bit today, when we talk about, about healing the uh, from Luke 4, verses 14 through 30, and we consider healing, we look down to, um, we look down to about verse... Let me get my context straight. We look down to about verse, mm, yeah, verse 23. Verse, verse 23. When, when we look down to verse 23, we find this word healing, this, this, this proverbial saying that Jesus says, he says, physician, heal thyself, heal thyself. And yesterday I didn't, I, I didn't really get into um, this actual healing. But what we have to understand is that when we talk about healing in, in this climate of seven, in this climate of seven, and in this climate of where, where the enemy is trying to bring great division, um, he's trying to separate and divide, only the mature are going to survive and survive well, survive well. You know, everybody comes through the same season, but people get wet at differing degrees. People get cold at differing degrees. It's how we prepare, prepare for seasons that helps us weather them. So let me tell you this, this is not the first time we're gonna be in a season where we see Matthew 24 manifesting. And it's not the last time we're going to be in the season, rather, where, where, where we see uh, racial tension and we see police brutality and we see um, um, this social media psychosis that's going on. Uh, I'm, listen, listen, and let me say this publicly so y'all understand me. I don't need to see another video of a black man getting beat down. I've seen enough of those. Okay, I, I don't need you to share that with me. Unless your video that you're showing me is solution oriented, you can keep it. I, I'm, I'm tired of seeing it. Um, and I'm not tired of seeing it because I want to become desensitized to the situation. But I'm tired of seeing it in that, in that, watch this, you can become inundated with the social media. You can come inundated with all the video and it will literally just wear your spirit down. Okay, so so what you feed yourself, you're gonna begin to watch this reproduce in your life. Okay, so 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 unless unless a video is solution oriented, y'all, I love you, but don't don't send it to me. Don't I don't need another make this go viral. I really don't. 
um, I'm, I actually, I'm probably going to pin a piece of poetry later today that says, I don't want another video. I don't want another video and I don't want it from two perspectives. I don't want to see another black man die, but I don't want to put it on repeat either. Because every time to me in my psyche, you re-victimize yourself by going over it over and over and over and over again. So we continually keep this stuff playing in our spirit and it just flat wears us out. Okay. So if it's so a part of healing yourself is going to be you you doing self therapy and just flat out avoiding some things. You don't have to look at every video they send you. You don't have to get into every conversation that's around you. You don't have to get into every debate with people. You have to learn how to heal yourself. And as I said yesterday, um, broken people with great platform break other people. When you have a great platform and you have influence, especially in this social media age, you can do a ton of damage, a ton of damage just with a momentary split second emotion. And you decide to hit that return button, that share button, whatever button you use to activate on your device. And all of a sudden you put something out there in perpetuity almost. So you have to understand the responsibility as believers. If we're going to be purveyors of kingdom, if we're going to teach kingdom, we got to be very selective about what we hit the shift them in the return button on or the enter button on or the post button on. We have to be very selective of that. And the condition of our heart is going to somewhat determine how willing we are to damage the platform that hears our influence. Okay. So I don't I, so I don't need another video of another person dying. I know police brutality exists. I don't need to make it go viral. I mean, I can get I, and, I, and I'm just having a moment. This is self therapy for a moment. You know, because I love so many people and so many people are connected to me. And I'm connected to them, which I love. That's a kingdom connection. But the truth of the matter is, if you know, if you know, 5000 people, let's just take social take, take Facebook for a minute. If you know 5000 people. And, and a tenth of them send you the same video of the same person dying, it wears you out, okay? So, 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 so when we talk about this physician, heal thyself. Jesus says, Jesus says in a proverbial fashion, he says, you're almost gonna say in a mocking fashion, heal us. The same stuff you did in Capernaum, come do it over here. The same stuff you did over there in Capernaum, come do it over here. So he says it almost in the, in the sense that they're going to be um, kind of sarcastically at him about it. Watch this. So when, when we talked about this yesterday, we talked about this word healing. Um, I didn't really get into it in, in, in real, real depth. But the word itself, because I was, I was just in such a prophetic preaching mode, I didn't really define, go all the way down. So thank you for tuning back in to me so we can straight define some stuff. Watch this. So this word in this, in this, in this context comes from the Greek word therapeuo, okay? Ther ther yeah, therapeuo. Therapeuo means, watch this, watch this. In its essence, it means to serve or to do service. And it's a verb. It's an active word. This means this is something you've got to do. And watch this. When we get love, again, we have to couple it with truth, but it all calls us to do something. Um, deliver me again from this paralyzed Christianity that only says we're going to pray and we never ever really act on anything. Watch this. When, when Jesus was upset about them doing what they were doing in the temple, he said, this, this is going to be, uh, my, my father's house is going to be a house of prayer, but you turn it into a den of thieves. But you know what else he did? He flipped the table. Je yes, Jesus. Okay, let me tell you, Jesus flipped a table. And the scripture says he grabbed a switch and, and began to flog them jokers and drive them out of the kingdom. You know, you, you just drive them out of the kingdom. I mean, drive them out of the temple. So you got to understand this. That's right, dirt. It just runs your pressure up. It keeps keeps you under constant tension. But if we're going to really do service, watch this, to serve, to do service, watch this, to heal, cure, or restore to health. Now, when we talk about this health, I want I want to couple this with another scripture. I want to couple this with another scripture. And let me let me let me let me couple it with this one. Um, um the scripture says, the scripture says that God has a desire for us. God has a desire for us, 
And I want to show you this desire. And it's a common desire that you know of. Okay? So I'm not going to take it to something you don't know. But I want to turn your attention. I want to take your turn your your attention. I'm sorry, that's I didn't spell that right. Um, there we go. Now we're in there. Watch this. I want to take you to third John, the first chapter, verse two. I want to take you to third John, the first chapter, verse two. Now, in context, in context, in context, I want to look at verses one and two. One and two. Third John chapter one, verses one and two. The Bible says, the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love, watch this in truth. Now, notice we talked about the Ephesians 4 model. If we're going to birth kingdom, we have to speak the truth in love. But Paul, but, but John says here also that I'm going to love in truth. They work hand in hand. You cannot properly love a person unconditionally with the agape love of God and agape o them, love them actively. Watch this when you only have a portion of their truth. Okay, so watch this. Have you ever messed up in life? You ever messed up in life? I mean, have you ever really, have you ever really done something and you know you messed up? Okay. <laughs> When, 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 when people know when people know only a portion of you, they can only love what they know. So, so if you're only giving people a piece, a person, this piece over here, and a person, that piece over there, you don't have real love. It's, it's, watch this. It's when you can know the worst of me and still love me that you truly experience unconditional love. It's when you see the differences that could easily divide us, but you don't allow them to divide us. That's when we're really loving. It's when I offend you, I hurt you, I disappoint you, and you overcome that in your conditions and your actions toward me, that's when you're loving unconditionally. Watch this. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. So that means he didn't wait for us to get right to show his love for us unto the point of death. He caught us while we were in our worst of our worst. We were as wrong as wrong could be. We was we was as wrong as having on two left shoes. I mean, we were just wrong. I, I, we, 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 were, we were so full of sin and in sin, and yet he says, I love them enough to die for them. So watch this. Can you love that person who's prejudiced? Can you love that employer that discriminates you? I know you've got to speak the truth to them, but can you love them in the context of speaking your truth and can you speak your truth in the context of their of your love? See, they've got to work hand in hand if you're going to really birth the kingdom. And watch this. Can I tell you this? You can't do that in your own humanity. You have got to do that through Christ. <laughs> Listen, some of this stuff that we're enduring right now, some of this stuff we're enduring right now, it's going to take the love of Christ to get us through it. Listen. I submit, I raise my hands on that note because in my humanity, sometimes I get angry. In my humanity, I have my own prejudices and biases. Watch this. Don't act like you don't have prejudices and biases. At some level in our flesh, each of us have something that God has to deal with us on. I'm going to say again, as I said yesterday, go back and make sure you watch last Friday's broadcast by Bishop Petway. You got to see that broadcast because God is boiling some things to the surface. He's boiling some things to the surface. And so watch this. Watch this. So so when, 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 when Paul says here, listen, this is this is this is Gaius whom I love in truth. Watch this. He says, I love him in truth. I love in truth. In other words, in other words, I have the akapeo. I am, I am welcoming to him. I'm well pleased with him. This is an active love that I have for him. But watch this. I love him in truth. In the aletheia. Watch this. Now watch this. In the aletheia. Watch this. I love him it, objectively and subjectively. And here's where, here's where we run into trouble with this love and this truth debate. I can love you truthfully, truthfully, objectively. In other words, I can love you as a truth and say I love you, but until I love it subjectively, in my personal excellence, in my personal experience towards you, <coughs> pardon me, caught a sneeze there. 
until I love you in an active love, in my moral excellence, in my personal excellence. See, I can say I love you. I can say I love you with my words, but can I love you with my deeds? Can I love you publicly and privately? <clears throat> <laughs> pardon me y'all all of a sudden my sinuses and everything just dropped on me okay so can i love you can i love you watch this can i love you in my significant relational group with the folks around me who may not like you can i love you when when, when you're good or love you when you're quote unquote bad can i actively love you and so <laughs> oh pardon me man that just that just Man, that just that's got me going. So, so when it comes to this love that that that, that John is talking about, he says, I, "I'm gonna love you in truth." <laughs> oh my gosh, this is terrible. I'm gonna love you in truth, but loving you in truth also must be balanced by speaking truth in love. And now, here's a truth that we need to understand: resist and heal thyself. In the backdrop of healing thyself. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. <laughs> oh my Jesus, please, Father, heal me. Dry this up quickly, Father, because I need to teach this this morning. <laughs> Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Now I wanna I wanna deal with simply just the soul in this context. <laughs> The soul is the suke. It's your breath of life. Watch this. It's your. It's the seed of your feelings, desires, affections, emotions. It's the seed of your consciousness towards yourself. Watch this, because as I've taught you, you're a tripartite being. With your spirit, you have God consciousness. With your soul, you have self consciousness. You know how you feel. The essence of who you are. It's life. Okay. And then with your body, you have. You world consciousness. So he says, I want you to prosper even as your soul prospers. In other, it, in other words, it is God in connecting, watch this, the suke with the therapeuo. It is God's desire that you be healed in your emotions, in the seat of your emotions. God doesn't want you walking around in a bunch of stress. God doesn't want you walking around angry all the time. God doesn't want you walking around depressed all the time. He wants your soul, your feelings, your desires, your affections, the seat of your emotions to be in a healthy place, in a healthy place. And so it's important that you understand that. When, 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 when we talk about here in this Luke 4 reference, when he says, physician, heal thyself, the healing that must come forth, watch this, must be internal. So watch this. You need to be, you need to guard your mentals, as the young folks say. You got to watch over the things that, that, are, that are hitting your spirit. Because watch this, you'll mess around and you'll watch 15 videos and you'll find yourself angry when you wasn't angry 15 minutes ago. You'll find yourself frustrated when you weren't frustrated a few minutes ago. You'll take on conversation, watch this, and be angry about things that you really know nothing of. You were just told of those things. So, so in this season, in this season where the enemy is trying to um, separate and divide the kingdom, we have to move to a level of maturity. Watch this. That says, watch this. I can, I can, I can sympathize and empathize with you, but I don't have to be enraged by the situation. So, as we talked about yesterday, position heal thyself. And in that context, that 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 because you're anointed, it does not exempt you from feeling. Let me say this to all my ministers and preachers and bishops and teachers and intercessors and all that on the line today. Just because you're anointed doesn't mean you do not feel. You still have a soul. And as long as you have a soul, you're going to have a seat where your emotions abide. And so... In this season, we've got to be careful to have some self-therapy. The Bible says it on this regard. Watch this. And here, here, here's the thing. The, 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 let me pull the reference for you. The, 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 the disciples once asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? What's the greatest commandment? Now, they said this trying to run, grand, run, run, run game on it. 
And sometimes you have to wonder why why people ask you certain questions. Okay. Um, um, let me let me find my reference. Um, when, when they ask him, they ask him this in the gospels, they ask him about the greatest commandment. What's the greatest commandment? Um it's gonna be over in my in my gospels real quick, and I'm just kind of kind of working through for a moment. So stay with me. He said, they said, Lord, what's 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 the greatest commandment? What is the greatest commandment? Um let me see if I can find this reference because it comes to my spirit. Yeah, yeah. Matthew the 22nd chapter. Matthew the 22nd chapter, verse uh let's go down to this context. Matthew 20, Matthew the 22nd chapter. Make a note, Matthew 22nd. Um, we're going to look at verse, um, 34 through 30, 34 through 40, Matthew 22, 34 through 40. Now watch this. I want you to see this very quickly because in, 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 in loving others, if you don't love yourself, you're not going to be able to love them properly. Okay. So, so, so your mistreatment of others is an is a, is really an indication indication that you don't know how to handle yourself well either, or either. Watch this, Matthew twenty twenty two verse thirty four. But when the Pharisees had heard that he put that he had put the Sadducees in silence, so watch this. This is this is a spiritual debate going on. Jesus had just had an encounter. Uh, let's please make sure that we um we um mute our phones for those of us who are on the line. I can hear some shifting in the background. Please mute your phone. So watch this, um. If you if you are uh, Jesus had just had a, a debate with the Pharisees, he I mean, uh, I mean uh, with the Sadducees, and he had dealt with them on a um, a spiritual disagreement. He had just debated with them and put them to silence. In other words, his truth overrode their religious postulating. Then the Pharisees say, "Well, since he got the Sadducees, we're gonna come get our piece of it. We're gonna try him too." Now watch this. Then they gathered together. Then one of them, watch this, which was a lawyer. <laughs> Asked him a question, tempting him and saying, so watch this. So you, you got to understand, first of all, they were coming at Jesus all the way left. They were coming at him all the way wrong. And watch this in a climate like this, where everyone is holding on to their own view or their own position. They're, they're holding on to what they think is best. Most of the folks, watch this, most of the folks, watch this. Um, when they come to conversation, they're not coming to understand. They're coming to make a to make a point. If when you come to understand, when you come to understand, watch this. When you come to understand, then you're open for discussion. But if you're only coming to if you're only coming to make a point, then you're never going to get to the point to where we can understand one another. So, so, so they when they when they came to him in in, in Matthew twenty two. Hold on, I lost my reference there. When when they came to him in Matthew twenty two, when they came to him in Matthew twenty two, they came to him. Watch this off the off, off from from square one, playing games. All right, they came to him from square one, um, playing games. And so when they came to him, they came to him saying, "What? What? Watch this. Let, let, we, we finna get him. We finna get him." We finna get him. Watch this. We gonna ask him a question. He's not gonna be able to handle it. <laughs> so watch this. They, he 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 had put them to silence. So then the lawyer steps up and says, "Watch this. Here's my here's the question, Master. Which is the greatest commandment in the law? What's the greatest commandment in the law? Watch the game. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul." And with all thy mind, this is, watch this, the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto the first. It's like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So watch this. For you to hate me says you don't have self-love. Because you're going to have, because you have to love me as yourself. And so the first thing that we've got to consider is, am I in a healthy place in reference to my own soul, in reference to my thought life, in reference to how I feel? This is kingdom therapy for a minute. The therapeuo to have the to do the service of healing. So watch this. This listen, listen. If you were a surgeon, if you were a surgeon, I would not advise you 
to, to perform surgery on yourself. I wouldn't advise you to cut yourself. But as believers, Paul says we have to examine ourselves. We have to look at ourselves. We have to look at ourselves in such a way to say, am I in a healthy place to be even giving anyone any advice? You know, the reason your marital issue is as big as it is, is because you went to a person who did not like the idea of being married at all to get advice. Okay. You you went to a person and you talked to a person um, and, and, and you went to someone for advice and they ain't even healthy in their own marriage. Their house is tore up. They're on their fifth husband. And so you talking about, girl, I got, I got problems with Rollo. Girl, I, look, you need to tell me something. No, 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 no. Because watch this. You can give me an objective truth, but you cannot give me a subjective understanding. You can tell me that the marriage bed is undefiled. undefiled. That's scripture. That is objective. But if you've never been married, then you haven't experienced the marriage bed. So you can't give it to me subjectively because you haven't experienced it so we got to understand this the things you go through the experiences you go through they prepare you to be able to minister to other people and if we're going to minister and birth kingdom then what we're pulling forth is the thought the will and the intents of god then we first of all need some experience with god and we need to have reckoned some things within ourselves and our own psyche and suke are you healthy when you're telling people how they ought to treat people of a different relation uh, uh, race are you healthy in your own relationship to the thing you're trying to instruct them in relating to in other words watch this you can't hate women and give marital advice to women i mean to a man about a woman if you hate women then your advice is going to be skewed by the fact that you hate women. You can't, you can't be a woman who's been hurt by a man and hate men and then watch this, go sit up and have um conversation about how women ought to interact with men. You're speaking from a place of woundedness and now your platform becomes tainted with your own wound. You got to first love yourself enough to get healthy Love yourself enough to deal with your issues so that you don't make your issues everybody else's demise. This is kingdom therapy. Physician, heal yourself. You're a doctor, you got to operate on your own self. <laughs> you, you Listen, listen. If you don't deal with things within yourself, then everything around you is going to be jacked up by what you're thinking inside. Think about the context of the story I shared you on yes, shared with you on yesterday on race relations. When 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 Aaron and Miriam came against Moses about marrying an Ethiopian woman, they were great prophets of the Lord. It didn't make them not be used of God. It meant that something was wrong in their souls. And watch this: as leaders, we've got to check our souls. We've got to check our thinking. As members of the family, watch this. Your history has affected your soul. And, and watch this. If you're not careful, your soul will affect your future. As I said once before, and I say again, you got to put God and the word of God between what you feel and how you act on what you feel. Because if you don't, you're going to end up, watch this, always acting in your emotions. And that's going to be damaging. So if we're going to birth kingdom, our souls have to be in a good place. We got to be in a place to where we know at least we're conscious of what we're dealing with so we don't deal those things to others. If you know, watch this, that you're having um some 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 issues, some issues with 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 with, with marriage, or you're having some issues with how you're relating to your spot, your 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 spouse, then you don't need to be counseling right now. <coughs> that's it overseer times if you don't heal you you bleed on the people that did not cut you i love that comment let me share that again if you don't heal you then you bleed on the people that did not cut you so we have to heal 
So let me let me kind of come to a close. Just I'm really struggling in my physicality this morning. For some reason, I'm just I'm just not not processing well in my body. Uh, but watch this. How much of your history have you not healed from, and therefore you're painting everyone that is like your offender with the same brush? Let me say it again. How much of your history have you not healed from and you're painting everyone that's like your offender with the same brush? In other words, because you were hurt by a man, you don't trust no man. Because you were hurt by a woman, you don't trust no women. Because you were hurt by a, a, a white man, you don't trust no white men. Because you were hurt by a black man, you don't trust no black men. And because of your hurt, it has affected your soul and the suitcase the, of, the, of the psyche of you. Your psyche has become so um, 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 calloused with the pain of your past until everything you approach in your future has to come through the callous to even get to your heart. I grew up in a family of brick masons and... Um, I can remember, and I didn't. I didn't do it a whole lot because I just wasn't cut out for it. Um, they was trying to make me a brick mason, and I was supposed to be a preacher. They probably would have done better if they'd have put me a little, a little, um, <laughs> a little podium out there on the work site and let me preach to them jokers. Now nah, I'm just joking. Uh, but I grew up in a family of brick masons, and watch this. One of the things that we did, my job, I was a helper. I never laid any bricks. I was just a helper because I never developed the skill to lay the bricks. Cause it was money on the line, and so my uncle Jack, and my daddy, and my uncle, my um, uh, my uncle Melvin, all these guys would be laying the brick. But my job was to supply the bricks so that they could get the wall built. And I remember handling those bricks, and at that time we had to manually carry them. <coughs> so I'd have five or six, sometimes seven, or eight bricks, you know, lined up under my arms. And I would have these bricks, and we'd be moving the bricks to the site. We'd get each area stocked up with the bricks. And these were men who worked hard. And one thing you noticed about their hands, watch this. They developed calluses and cuts. See, the way I handled the bricks, they would cut my forearms. Because if you got bricks like that and you're holding them in your forearms, they'll pinch your skin between the bricks. So at times, I, by the end of the day, the few times I did do it, and this is probably why I stopped doing it, my, my, my forearms would have small cuts on them where the bricks had pinched me. Now the same bricks that cut my arms put calluses on their hands because they'd have to handle a trial and those bricks uh, would, 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 would make their fingers hard and rough. So the more they handled bricks, the harder their hands became. Hands became. And it was the body's natural method the natural development that that protected it when it was wounded. You ever you ever wore a shoe and rubbed a callus on your big toe? That says to you that the shoe was intrusive to the skin or the toe on your foot. And so a callus developed, a callus developed to protect that part of the body. It's a very natural thing. So when you see calluses and blisters and those things, that means that thing's been worked, it's been invaded upon, it's been intruded upon, it's taken injury. You know what? Just like it happens in the natural, it happens in the spiritual. You get rejected. You get abused. You get the negative words. And, and you don't see the outside calluses because you hadn't been touched in the physical, but your soul's been touched. And after a while, you find yourself saying things like, you know, I just don't want to deal with folk. I don't like people. You know, I, I, could, I, I wouldn't mind preaching if I didn't have to have people in my church. <laughs> you know, you, you find yourself getting calloused because your soul naturally wants to protect itself. After so many rejections, you decide, I just, I'm, you know, I'm just done with relationships. I'm not, I'm not worried about relationships. I ain't finna love nobody because it hurts too hard. I've been hurt too many times. I've been calloused over. Listen, until you heal yourself, until you heal yourself, you're not open to the risk of even being used again. Even, even, so, so, so we got to, when we talk about physician, heal yourself. 
You got to look at what's within you that you need to deal with in order to be de in order to deal with what's without you, what's outside of you. Could it be that the thing you're praying about God with in reference to your spouse is really an issue you have inside? Could it be that the, the things you're praying about in your society are really issues that you have inside? So we got we to gotta be careful in this season to make sure, to make sure that we are healthy within ourselves. Maybe your family issues are not really family issues. They're individual issues that you're spewing onto your family. Maybe your relationship issues or with how you're relating to yourself, you've got to love them as you love yourself. So listen, let's take time. And if we need to take a time out, take a time out. Get yourself healthy. Get yourself healthy in your own, in your own mind. Because watch this, especially if you are a leader. Especially if you're a leader. Especially if you're a person of influence. You can take your wounds and wound others. We have got to understand that. We've got to understand that. We, we have got to understand that. We, we've got to, we've got to look at ourselves and say, am I in a place where I can effectively be a voice for the kingdom? Not a voice for my people, not a voice for white superiorism or, or black um, 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 liberation, but can I just be a voice of righteousness? kingdom righteousness because guess what if i'm loving right it's not gonna have color i'm gonna love everybody i don't know about them but i love my people that's not kingdom and as i said to you in our, in our earlier broadcast you got to be willing to call some things on the carpet within your own significant relational group with people that look like you we got to talk through some stuff folks and so Forgive me today, Mother Maud's gonna pray. Um, but 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 please forgive me. I'm, I'm, I for some reason I just kind of crashed right there. I don't know what what's happening with my with my sinuses and everything. But nevertheless, um, it, it just may be the rain. I don't know what it is. But forgive me. Join me tomorrow. We'll come back and we'll talk some more tomorrow. Let me let, let me let me let me take a um let me take a uh, some some medication today and see if I can get my my sinus and everything straight. Um, yeah. That I love that. Yes, yes. We can't be proud. We can't be too proud to say that we're hurting. You're absolutely right, Mr. Um, Linda Thomas. Let me share that comment with us uh, verbally. You, we can't be be too proud to say that we're hurting. We're hurting, and if we're hurting, take time to deal with it before we we put opinion out there. We do things. It's easy to blame others instead of dealing with ourselves. It, it's much easier. It's much easier than to do the hard work of healing ourselves. You know, it's that's hard work. Um, 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 you, you, you've got to look at yourself. You've got to deal with you. You have to, as Paul says, examine yourself. <laughs> Take a sculptory look at yourself. And as much as you have dissected your enemy, dissect yourself. Be as intrusive in yourself. Look at your own soul. Because watch this, the way you love me is an indication of the way you've loved yourself. Because the scripture says that you got to love your neighbor as yourself. So if you don't love you, then I know you can't love me. And conversely, if you ain't loving me, you couldn't be loving yourself. We have to work through. Okay, we have to work through. Mother Ma, please pray for us. Pray for me. Pray for my pray for my, my G boy, my, 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 my nephew Caden too. Um, got some sickness out there. So let's just pray.
receiving what you have for us. I so thank you this morning as I lift up Apostle this morning. I pray that you would touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. In the name of Jesus, I bind that uh, cough, glory to God, hallelujah, that sinus. I pray that you would dry it up, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would strengthen him as he continues to teach the word of God. I thank you, glory to God, how you blessed us yesterday when we had our beautiful uh, services on yesterday. How the praise and worship uh, brought us into the spirit of worship yesterday. Glory to God. How the musicians play that. The melodious tunes of Father God. We receive your word. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I thank you. Glory to God. We weren't in a building, but we were in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The church was in us, and we received your word. Lord God, I thank you and I praise you this morning. Glory to God. We come, we've heard again, but we realize, Father God, when we are weak, we can say we are strong. We can't do anything in our oh, strength. Jesus. But glory to God, we can say, I can do all things through Christ yes. with strength in me. I pray, hallelujah, for those who are going through, and we all are going through, but we must lift each other up. We must pray for strength. And Father God, you are here. Give us what we need. I so thank you this morning. Glory to God. I pray your blessing on those who are going through that have been affected a positive for this disease. I pray especially for Tina, Lord God, having a hard time with it. But glory to God, I know you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask God. Thank I pray for everyone on here. We realize we are blessed. This is the best time. Yes, this is a good time for us to reach out and touch yes, the untouchable. Hallelujah. Oh, to lift up the bow down heads of people that's going through. Hallelujah. We are called yes, for such a time like this. And this is a best, the best time oh, while everybody don't know which way to go or what to do. But we must stand still and see the salvation oh, God, of the Lord because you are still God. You're still in control because of what it looks like, what it sounds like. Glory to God. We, the body of Christ, we, the intercessors, must intercede. Glory to God. We must love in spite of who we are, in spite of who they are. When we search ourselves and find out that we need more of you, we all need more of you. Lord God, I pray. Hallelujah. And I lift you up this morning. I thank you for this day. I thank you for those who have dialed in. I pray your blessing on each and every one of us. I plead the blood of Jesus over the body of Christ everywhere to everyone that we will go for and do the ministry that you will sign us to do, that we will make a difference in somebody like this day as we go forth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Father, we bless you now, God, and we thank you, Lord God, that you're returning strength to Mother Ma. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you have strengthened her even today, Father God, to stand in the gap for me in my time of weakness. We thank you and we bless you, Lord God, for the intercessors who are praying. We thank you, Lord God, for their strength. We thank you, Lord God, that you can strengthen us and we can declare in our weakness that we are strong. So we bless you by the revelatory word that you release in our lives. And we say thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, number 2305, 2305 is going to be our recording for the day. You can pick that up at 712-775-7099. 712-775-7099. Access code 789111. We speak healing to all those who are dealing with sickness in their bodies, over these young ones, over our elders, over everyone that's dealing with sickness. We release that healing over your lives today. And we believe you. We believe God that he can fully restore where the enemy has come in with sickness and disease. So we bless God for you. Listen, we love you all. Um, listen, um, um, we thank God for you. And I thank you for praying for me. I thank you for praying for me. Let's continue to pray for one another. Let's continue to strengthen one another. Um, that's why the Bible says um, that, that two are better than one. <laughs> and a threefold cord is not easily broken. Yeah, because if one falls down, the other can bear them up. The other can bear them up. Um, wow, thank you, Jesus. I feel even something prophetic in that, that we need to bear one another up. We can listen. And when we talk about falling, oh God, when we talk about falling down, falling down is not always physical. Oh, come on, somebody. Falling down is not always physical. You can digress and fall down morally. You can fall. Listen, that's why the Bible says if you see a brother overtaken and fought in a fault, those of you who are spiritual, God, I feel like preaching again. Uh, those of you who are spiritual, if you see a brother overtaken in a fault, those of you who are spiritual, 
go to him and restore him. So overtaken means you've fallen. You, you, you've fallen morally. You've fallen spiritually. And now you need some people in your life who are spiritual enough to come and help you stand up again. Stand up in your belief. Stand up in your conviction. So if they've fallen, they've fallen in discrimination. They've fallen in racism. They've fallen in sexism. They've fallen in gender biases. They've fallen in anything in their psyche. Who is spiritually minded enough to come and help them? To really come to their relief? Kingdom people, we got to be those people. We got to be those people to say, I see where you are. And the way you are is jacked up. I love you enough to work with you long enough to get you to a healthy place, okay? So I thank God for those of you who are praying. I thank you for your declarations over my life. I trust you guys. And as I trust you and we trust one another, we're gonna to continue to build and grow together. So I'm super excited about you in this season. I pray God's greatest grace be upon you, even as he watches over all of us. Be inspired, be lifted, and let's go manifest. Have a great day. Ugh. <sighs>